Civic Precinct Master Plan is an opportunity to now at this really critical time in the city's history to create an overlay that now ties all of the new Catalyst projects together. The space between the buildings is, is, is extremely important. I mean, you can say that a city could have a fantastic, iconic monument, whereas the main streets, the main uh, squares and places could very often be a place where you enter and come and see your other fellow citizens in the sort of open democratic society, and they should be the monuments of the city. If you create a good sense of place, you create a place where people would go and, and spend their private time. So if a, if a person uh, extends an urban public space into their own private sphere, I think you, you have managed to, to create a sense of place. And the, the more people that does this and uh, interact in these places, uh, the better the place is. The Civic Precinct Master Plan is an initiative that's been undertaken by the City of Edmonton to prepare a plan for the area that incorporates Churchill Square as well as the greater area around it. Public realm is actually all of the area that's that's not private space. So if you look at, at, for example, a street, you're looking at from one building face to the other building face. So it incorporates the sidewalks, the roadway, the landscaping and so on, the street features that are part of that space. We were uh, selected as the successful proponents for the Civic Precinct Master Plan. And because of the nature of what it's about, we went looking for the best of the best. So the consultant team that we have involved with us have had significant experience at this caliber and at this scale. GH3 from Toronto, Gell Architects, and they're from Copenhagen. It is about being social. I think that, that one of the things about, about having an animated downtown is that, is that people begin to meet. If they're in their cars or they're in their buildings, all they're ever going to meet is the people they work with. But if they go outside and they're going to bump into people maybe that they haven't seen for five years or people that they've never met that they sit beside on a bench, it brings back that sort of aspect of a small town where everybody knows each other, but it allows it to happen in the large city, which I think is pretty special. A good example for me, uh, being a newcomer here, is my experience of 30 years living in Vancouver. Like Edmonton, it had lots of its downtown that had surface parking lot, was unbuilt, um, and wanted to capitalize on its natural environment and extend that more into its urban design. Windsor in, in Edmonton is, uh, is part of the identity of the place and uh, we, we as planners or as people should never forget the, 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 the core identity of a place. When planning and when building and designing new spaces in Edmonton we should use this as a deliberate uh, tool for creating new spaces. Where I come from in Copenhagen and many other places also that this kind of outdoor cafe life is something that was not there before, that was something people said, no, it cannot happen here, the climate is wrong, we cannot do it. And then when you start doing it now in Denmark, Copenhagen, we have outdoor cafes the year round, also with snow and whatever that we have winter. Uh, and it's amazing how people adapt to that kind of thing. Another example is uh, we're working on in New York, giving advice on, on the bicycle and pedestrian planning of all of New York. For instance, the closure of Broadway and particularly Times Square. The city of New York has done this pilot project where they just paint uh, and uh, redistribute what is for people and what is for cars without having to change much more. And there you suddenly have tons of New Yorkers sitting on these small folding chairs and tables, which is not cafe chairs and tables, but city chairs and tables with umbrellas. And suddenly everybody is enjoying coffee to stay. I think actually Highline is, is a good example for me. I've seen the last couple of years how Highline has completely changed the whole neighborhood because it offers a kind of oasis in the city. People go there to relax uh, and people go there to, to get out uh, of, of the urban environment and get into something else. The master plan represents that poignant moment where a number of new things will get tied together and done successfully with the city as it exists today. So let's seize the opportunity.